In this lecture, we are going to learn how we can handle an unhandled rejection in Node.js. We have successfully handled errors in our Express application by passing operational asynchronous errors down to the global error handling middleware, which then sends relevant error messages back to the client, depending on the type of error that has occurred. Right. However, there can also be some errors which occurs outside of the Express. A good example of such error in our application would be MongoDB database connection. So if I go to server.js file, here we are making a MongoDB database connection. So basically using this connect method, we are trying to connect to MongoDB. And this method here, it is going to return a promise. If the connection was successful, then it will return a resolved promise. And in that case, this then block will be executed and this message will be logged in the console. But if the connection was not successful and some error occurred, in that case, the promise returned by this connect method, it will be a rejected promise. And we are handling that rejected promise using this catch method. So for now, I will simply remove this catch method from here. So now what will happen is, when we are going to make a connection to the MongoDB database, if that connection was not successful, in that case, it is going to return a rejected promise. And now we are not handling that rejected promise. So in this case, there will be errors that we need to handle as well. But these errors didn't occur inside of our Express application. Right. And because of that, the error handler which we have implemented, basically this global error handling middleware, it will not catch that error. This global error handling middleware, it is only going to catch those errors which has happened in the Express application. But this kind of error, it has not occurred inside the Express application. So that error will not be caught by the global error handling middleware. And let's actually see that practically. So what I'm going to do is, I'll go to this config.in file and there we have the database password. So basically this DB password. There I will simply change the password. So now this password is wrong. And now when we try to connect to the MongoDB database here using this connect method, since we are specifying a wrong password, the connection will be not successful. In that case, a rejected promise will be returned. And since we are not handling that rejected promise, the app will crash. So if I go ahead and if I save the changes, for that, let me first go ahead and let me save this file. Okay, and then let's go to the server.js and let's save the file. So it will basically restart the application. And when it will restart the application, the application will try to connect to the database. And at that time, the connection should not be successful. But for some reason, here, the database connection is successful even after we have changed the password. So let's see why is that. All right. Basically, when we are making a connection here, you see we are not specifying any user ID and password here. Because of that, it is connecting successfully. So let's again go back to config.in file. So here we are basically using the connection string. So let's try to change the connection string itself. And here you can see in the connection string only, we are specifying the user ID and the password, right? So it is going to use this user ID and password and not these environment variables. Okay, so here, let me go ahead and let me change the password. So here I will add one to it. Let's save the changes here. Let's go back to server.js again and let's save the changes again. And this time you will notice that the connection was not successful and there is an unhandled exception. Let me move this a bit up. So here you can see we have an unhandled rejected promise and it says authentication failed. So this authentication has failed on the MongoDB database server. It has not happened in our Express app. And we want to handle these kind of unhandled rejected promises. An unhandled rejection simply means that somewhere in our code, there is a promise which got rejected and we are not handling that rejected promise. So in this lecture, we are going to learn how to handle such unhandled rejected promises. Now, in this example, we can simply handle this rejected promise, the rejected promise returned by this connect method by adding a catch block like we were doing earlier. But in this lecture, our goal is to handle any unhandled rejected promise which might occur in our application. Basically, we want to handle the rejected promises globally. Now, how are we going to do that? So if you remember, in the very beginning of this course, we talked about events and event listeners. And we are going to use the same concept here. 
So each time there is an unhandled rejection anywhere in our Node.js application, the process object will emit an event called unhandled rejection. So on that process object, we can handle that unhandled rejection event by using this on method. And there we can specify the name of the event which we want to handle here. Here the name of the event is unhandled rejection. Okay, so whenever this unhandled rejection event occurs, that means whenever there is an unhandled rejection in our Node.js application, we want to execute some logic. For that, we are going to pass a callback function here. And this callback function is going to receive the event object. And that is going to be an error. So I will simply call it error. Inside this error, we are going to receive the rejected promise. Again, each time there is an unhandled rejection anywhere in our Node.js application, this process object is going to emit an event called unhandled rejection. And we are subscribing to that event using this on method. And whenever that unhandled rejection event occurs, that means whenever there is an unhandled rejected promise in our code, we are going to execute this callback function. And for now, I'm simply going to log the error message itself. So I'll say console.log and let's log the error message. Let's go ahead and let's save the changes now. And now you can see that the error message has been logged here. So the error message is bad auth authentication failed. Let's also log the error name. So I can say error dot name. Let's save the changes again. And now both the error name and the error message should be logged. So error name is MongoDB server error. And this is the error message. And in this way, we are handling the unhandled promise rejections. This code will handle all the unhandled rejected promises in the application. Now, when we have an error like this, where application is not able to connect to database, we cannot really do anything there, right? So all we can do is we can shut down our application. And to shut down the application, we can use process.exit. So after logging the error message and error name, we can say, process.exit and to this process.exit we can pass a code. The code 0 stands for success and 1 stands for uncaught exception and in this case the uncaught exception has occurred. So here we are going to pass 1 and before we exit the process let's also log one more message in the console and here let's say unhandled rejection occurred shutting down. Okay. Now, let's save the changes and let's see what happens. So server has started and now you can see, we can see this message and then the process has exited. Okay, so in this way, we can handle the unhandled rejected promises. Whenever there is an unhandled rejected promise, we might want to shut down our application. Now, the way currently we are implementing this, it is a very abrupt way of ending the program. Because this will just immediately abort all the requests that are currently still running or pending. And that might not be a good idea of doing so. And so, usually what we do is, we shut down gracefully where we first close the server and only then we shut down the application. So, to do that, first what we need to do is, here we are creating a server. Let's go ahead and let's store that server in a variable. I'll call that variable server. Okay, so this line of code here, it is going to return us a server object and we are storing that server object inside the server variable. Now, what we want to do is, first we want to close the server. For that we can say server.close. So, when the server is closed, then only we want to exit the process. Okay, so when the server is closed, we want to execute a callback function. Basically, this callback function. And inside this callback function, we are going to write this logic. Okay, and in this way, we are giving server some time to finish all the requests that are still pending or being handled at that time. And only after that, the server is closed and application process is killed. So now let's run this application again. And the results should still look the same because we are the only one accessing this application. But this is how we should exit the process in the real world projects. Okay, here we are exiting the process gracefully. First, we are closing the server and then only we are exiting the application. Okay, 
So currently we have exited the process and our app has crashed. And of course, this is not ideal that the app is crashed because right now the app is not running. It is not working at all. Right. So if a user makes a request to the server, he is not going to get any response. So usually in a production app on a web server, we will usually have some tool in place that will restart the application right after it crashes. Okay. And also some of the platforms that host Node.js, it will automatically do that on its own. And it is important because we don't want our application hanging like this forever. At some point, it must start and should be accessible. So here we are handling asynchronous code, which might return a rejected promise, which is not being handled anywhere else. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Here, let me go ahead and let me change back the password to original. And let me save the changes here. So now our application should be working because now we have changed the password. Alright, this is all from this lecture. See you in the next lecture.